and it's not happening at a slow rate like it's noticeable. In the last 10 years, you can definitely see higher water levels. Six million Texans live close to sea level on the Gulf Coast. It's home to massive ports and a third of the nation's oil refining. So what does it mean for Texas when science tells us because of climate change, the sea is rising faster now than at any time in at least the last 3,000 years? Right now, we're driving to Corpus Christi to see the Gulf of Mexico. What I wanna know is how much do we know about sea level rise, how do we know it, and how worried should we all be? Philippe, nice to meet you. To find out how much we know about sea level rise on the Texas coast, I'm meeting up with Dr. Philippe Tissot. The port is, depending on how you look at it, the fourth or fifth larger in the U.S. by tonnage. Philippe studies sea level with the help of gauges inside long tubes like this that are positioned across the Gulf. We're really getting the A tour here, past the garbage cans. So this is a little more crowded than I anticipated. So this is little... where we keep the tide gauges. <laughs> That's right. Behind all the junk. And you can see sea level is rising and we need to know how high the water will get over the coming years. Um, because uh, if we build uh, sea walls, if we build uh, other big infrastructure, those things will cost millions, hundreds of millions, even billions of dollars. The oldest sea level records in Texas are in Galveston. And over the last 100 years, they show sea level is up by two feet, according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. So why is this happening? Philippe says you got to start with emissions from power plants and automobiles, which pump huge amounts of carbon dioxide into the air. That carbon traps heat in the atmosphere, which makes the climate hotter. Most of that heat gets absorbed by the oceans, but the heat also makes the ocean water expand a bit, while at the same time, glaciers and ice sheets melt into the sea. So that's what makes the sea level rise, about the thickness of two quarters every year, year after year. But Philippe is telling me along the Texas Gulf Coast, something else is happening too. See the ocean there? The water is rising, but something's happening with the land also. The land is sinking. The land is sinking. Exactly. And if you're here, it doesn't really matter. If the land is sinking or the water is rising, your feet are gonna get wet either way. So uh, for a sort of a tide gauge here measures the combination of both, the land sinking and the water rising. And so that's why we call it relative sea level rise rather than sea level rise. Relative sea level rise. It starts with sinking land, which is a result of pumping out underground fluids like water or oil, which leaves a cavity below giving the ground above room to sag. After that, you add rising water. Taken together, according to research from the Virginia Institute of Marine Science, relative sea level rise is worse in Texas than almost anywhere else in the country. So is it fair to say that the land sinking is almost, it's a multiplier of the sea level rise? It makes it worse. Yeah, it makes, the, it, makes it more challenging. So we know the water is rising. How else is the ocean affected by climate change? So return guys goes here. That's Dr. Xinping Hu. He's an oceanographer with Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Xinping is telling me in addition to absorbing heat from the air, ocean water is also absorbing massive amounts of carbon dioxide. As we're moving along, he's siphoning up a small amount of that ocean water. What is that? testing for carbon dioxide? Carbon dioxide in the water. Yes. Xinping is telling me adding carbon dioxide to the ocean fundamentally changes water chemistry, making it more acidic. That change interferes with how some organisms develop, like oysters, impeding their ability to make hard shells. Scientists have even discovered organisms whose shells are dissolving. What are the long-term implications of these changes? Uh, the long-term implication is, uh, you know, if the water is getting more and more acidified, you're running into the risk of uh, um, altering the balance in the ocean. 
So we know the water is rising and the chemistry of the water is getting more acidic. But can you actually tell that things are changing? That's Katie Swanson with the University of Texas Marine Science Institute. She studies the impact of sea level rise on marshes, which provide essential food, refuge, and habitat for fish and wildlife. Plants need sediment, like they can't be in water and inundated all the time. She's out here measuring sediment levels, which is basically the sand under the water. And so this is what makes this technique so like useful and powerful is because we're getting like millimeter accuracy. So that's like 30, 34 and uh, yeah, three, 0.1? 344. Uh, My neck is getting very strong <laughs> right now. I yeah. core the whole thing. This is like yeah. a good workout. With sea level rise, if there's not enough sediment coming into the marsh, the marsh is drowning. You're losing the marsh and it's not being replaced anywhere else. You're saying because the water is rising, a lot of these plants are just having a hard time accommodating. Yeah, they're just being inundated or they're staying in the water more frequently, which is basically drowning them. Katie says that's important to people too, because marsh plants are natural protection against shoreline erosion and flooding. I mean, if you go to like the same habitat over and over again, like every time we'd show up and like there was dry sediment in marsh plants and now it's constantly under a foot of water and there's seagrass, which would mean that it's always inundated. 